call to order this uh, work session, right, of the Superior Planning Commission, Tuesday, October 18th, 2011. Going to call the roll, or do we need to? No, no we don't need to. Okay, forget that. No roll. Um, we asked some questions of staff in the last meeting related to the green building codes. You guys want to just go through the presentation here of the updated information? We can and do that. We'll, we'll go from there. Ernie, you want to take the lead? Items in the um, in the packet, I guess. Uh, one was just uh, the analysis of what other communities have done, and at this time nobody's doing anything. Uh, very little other than Boulder has their residential uh, green building code, and uh, Fort Collins has adopted the IGCC, uh, basically with some. You know variations on it, and then Boulder County has adopted just a Chapter Six out of the IGCC, which is what uh, we'd like to do as well. Suit with that, um, we feel like that's not very much of an onus uh, on a contractor to go um, a little bit above the Energy Code. By doing so, he's that's the it's like what they call the low hanging fruit in getting stuff, and it's got probably the uh, fastest payback. For their energy savings that they'll do. Uh, second one I sent you was uh, I have a book on green building which had a lot of examples of green constructed buildings and they had all their costs in there and um, they updated them to 2012. And then I compared it to um, what we have adopted, our Marshall and Swift cost index which is really a, a valuation tool for appraisers mostly is what it's used for. We've adopted it here as our kind of our minimum that we would allow um, per square foot of construction in the town. And it covers all kinds of buildings, including a uh, portion on residential. Um, and, that, um, and that would show that the green building costs would be a lot higher compared to that Marshall Swift. We're not quite comparing apples to apples here in that uh, chart. Um, as can be seen on uh, uh, some other examples that have been done. That's why I did those, those three um, there on those case studies that were done. Um, it's going back to the Marshall Swift. It's, it's really used as a minimum. And almost always if a uh, contractor comes in, um, he's always way well above the Marshall Swift numbers, even without doing any green building. And I guess uh, and checking a couple of different sources. 2004 study done by David Langdon Adamson of uh, 61 green buildings which were seeking some kind of LEED certification and I think 140 or so buildings that weren't uh, as a comparison. And that's that chart that's in black and white that I gave you. Um, if you look in there, darkest colors are non-green, the one I just gave you tonight non-green buildings, and as you go lighter in color, it's the uh, certified green buildings, and the lighter the color, the higher certification they were going for. Uh, as you can see, the, the green buildings are just scattered throughout all of the price differential there. Uh, and with their conclusion, uh, studying all the buildings and within different classifications, 
that there's really little or no difference in uh, building to green construction costs. Uh, I guess RS means which is a cost estimating service. Um, also, uh, I've done a study on it and recognized numbers are green building costs two to five percent more than conventional construction. Um, but again, they would say you know that that's the payback on that kind of thing through your energy savings and other cost savings uh, is a you know a short period of time, uh, generally less than five years. And that's for all green building. Actually, we're only looking at adopting an energy portion of that uh, code uh, to require at this time. Uh, another study done uh, in 2009 on greening our built world by Greg Katz uh, had green building at 2% greater than conventional. So all the studies seem to be in there at 5% or less extra cost to do the uh, make it a green building and they're all talking about like I say a LEED certified building or something that is certified um, which has a lot of different categories to, to uh, attend to not just energy costs. So Ernie, um, if, if we just adopted the energy portion of the green building you would theoretically you you'd get developers or folks that would do, you know, meet the energy code as part of their design criteria. Right. When in fact, if they spent their money different ways, they might actually be able to achieve a different, let's say, let's say in lieu of that, they said they wanted to achieve a LEED Gold certification. Right? Right. Would we, would we, by only adopting part of the green building code, would we be sort of shooting ourselves in the foot and saying, well, you got to meet this part if they would really spend their money and actually achieve a LEED gold certification for a building overall that might actually perform better because you've got an envelope to, that will meet the requirements in the site, how it's sited you know, on the site and how they're captured daylight and doing all these other things, which I guess parts of that are captured in the energy piece of it, but would... See what I see. The right. question I'm asking is, would we would would we get some better benefit if we gave people the option? Let's say either you meet the green building code, or you would you go for a, you, know, you get a lead certification. Um, certainly, that'd be a possibility. When um, when we're looking at adopting the entire code, um, I you know before we brought it to the board here, um, that was an option we were looking at is. Um, Giving the alternate of of meeting that code, becoming LEED certified, or meeting a uh, ASHRAE standard of 189.1, which is a, a very similar thing. I had showing that all three kind of things they had different categories and similar categories and similar you get points in them and that sort of thing. Um, so certainly we could put that in there um, as an alternate to meet either of those. It's just that to. to get the lead certification, you get yeah. it at the end of the project and not at the beginning right. when you're trying to get the approvals done. Right? Whereas with the code, it's part well, of Well, you have to submit actually approval. what you're going for. I mean, you have to list your points and everything and say, and we're attempting to get this lead certification. Right, I understand. So. Yeah, when you're going through a lead certification, you're right. putting a target uh, number of right. points. But you might you might fall short. Right. right. Or budget constraints might mean you're not going to choose something that you've gotten a couple of points on. I think rare would be the case that if they were trying to get certified that they wouldn't meet our requirements of that Chapter 6 of the IGCC. I mean, they would not. It would rare would be the case. Oh, yeah, rarely. Not, I, yeah, yeah, probably right. Probably right. So, um, but I, yeah, I still don't see a problem with putting that in there if they wanted to go that route. Given the only thing we have to have is then some kind of a penalty if they didn't get certified in green. So they weren't just skirting and then Right. Oh, Saying we're going to do it, but oh, we didn't make it. We didn't make it. We gave it our best shot, or whatever, right. but didn't do it. Uh, that may be that they'd have to do something. You can always add things like uh, have to purchase um, like solar power from somebody else. That was the thing. Yeah, and they can even purchase from the town the solar power. Then, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
that or put uh, solar on the roof, some on-site energy themselves or purchase it from a third party. Would the green building standards apply to the town as well? Yes, they were going to build, yeah. You adopt the standard, yeah. The town has to uh, meet the meet, meet. codes that they've adopted, right? Except for, on, except for on electrical signs. Yeah, right. <laughs> But I can always pledge that and say, you know, we put in so much solar, that's going to account for a lot of uh, any new building that they did. But okay. I would think they would want to, if they're looking to adopt it and put it on others, I think the town board would want to uh, make sure the drone buildings met that also. I also handed out to you a couple of case studies. Three of them that, uh, these were 2003 and 2004. But they just also show that the, uh, the additional costs um, to me to become lead certified are such that then. <clears throat> that they're looking at short payback periods. Um, like uh, in the first one, no solar, you know, list of total construction costs, and then gives the greening costs, which were the additional costs there, and list the items that they had there, and the paybacks on, on their items were four to seven years. The other ones just tell give the savings per year, projected savings per year, not a payback period. But. Okay. And the <clears throat> health center in Oregon, the additional cost was only four dollars and fifty cents per square foot on that one, which is pretty low. And I know they're uh, expecting savings of uh, like seven hundred thousand dollars a year. Getting back to the, the other communities around, I think they're all kind of a wait and see. Um, the 2012 version of the IGCC will be out early next year, and I think they're looking to evaluate that and see what it is uh, before they move forward. Um, some of them, like Westminster and Erie, are not getting any direction to go to Green, and so they're not looking to do anything. But most of the other communities around in Boulder County are uh, going to at least look at that code and, uh, and determine what they want to do with it, if anything, or just, you know, adopt something on their own. One of the items in here you pointed out was that the, um, Fort Collins added a section of their code um, titled Sustainable Building Construction, which is similar to the portions of the IGCC without specific performance criteria. For instance, like in um, Waste Diversion, which yeah. is an item in there, they said you have to develop a waste diversion plan, but they don't give a minimum limit. Um, whereas in the IGCC in itself, they give a limit. It starts at 50% and it goes up and you get and in the cut waste across. That type of waste diversion plan, is that construction waste and also ongoing operational waste? Correct. So recycling and whatever else? Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> Mostly it says uh, the, the waste diversion itself is for the construction waste, mm -hmm. and then you have to provide equal space for like trash and recyclables on the site. Um, I don't think they give a, a number. It would be hard to do once a building's in operation to determine uh, how much paper is being recycled versus how much trash they have. Other than they have to have an equal amount, an equal sized container, let's say. As far as staffing, and the only one who had looked into that was Boulder, City of Boulder, and they um, didn't think they'd be up, have to, the 
staff up or any to uh, meet these requirements. Most of the onus goes on to the architects and the developer to bring in the plans and it's just a matter of checking them, making sure that they're following the requirements that are in the code and how they've met their points or whatever you know, they're getting. And that uh, the plan checkers will become adapt at that as they go along and uh, won't add enough extra time or maybe they'll pay them an hour overtime or something. But they didn't see it. Not. I would view it the same way. That it's, a, it's a matter of checking checking it over and uh, but familiar with the processes that are required in, in all of the green building and so that um, it's, it's not that hard to check and make sure they follow those procedures. <clears throat> I mean the current energy code requires both an electrical and a mechanical contract uh, engineers to sign off on sheets that they have uh, met their portion of the energy conservation code. Um, and it would just be kind of an extension of that. They would certify the things and then you just go through it and see that they're following the procedures required. Similar to Denver, they, they require a, a comp check. Right, that's what it is, comp check. Comp check right. thing, yeah, so. And that's in the 2006 code already. And uh, which would just be expanded then for. And <clears throat> even the energy code gets into building envelope as well as, uh, you know, just the equipment and stuff that you're sure. using and, uh, and how you're delivering it. Um, but it gets into the four parts of energy conservation. What do you think? I don't, Greg? Yeah, I don't really have any questions. Um, you know, I, my only in, in looking at it again. You know, I asked last time why, why now? I understand we're behind by the looks of it because we haven't done anything since 2006, right? Some of these other cities have done well, adopted it's, things. It's 2000, like County, Boulder. 2009. Most of them have adopted 2009 code, right? So that's what I mean by behind. Not, not behind. I, on the other hand, I think this has taken a step forward in front of, of most, ahead of most of the other cities. So one way we're a little behind, but then we're taking a step that puts us forward of, ahead of others, other surrounding communities. So, you know, but I, I it was question. not so far ahead as that. They'll be also be looking at adopting 2012 codes right. next next year or early 2013 at the latest. Yeah, they'll, they'll be looking at them, which doesn't mean that. Well, I mean, current the regular economy. codes they'll be looking to adopt, but then also be looking at the IGCC as they do that right. to see if they want to do anything there. Right, but they'll be looking to see if in current economic conditions if they want to do that now. Right. That'll be part of their consideration. So to say that whether they will or won't, we have no idea really. Right. But if they do the research, I think they'll see. That, I mean, every study that's being done is coming up with a you know, zero to five percent increase in costs uh, and paid back you know, in some right. fashion and actually paid back even beyond the payback period in cost savings and beyond that. So. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, don't, I don't question the math. I don't question the need to be there. You know, my only question is whether we want to do this in the current environment. Um, and then uh, I can see the numbers and see that it does pay back, and it's a there's a pretty min minimal increase. I mean, from the last meeting, my concern was cost more than anything, cost increase to the construction. But from this, it seems to me that it's not a prohibitive cost increase, and you get the payback. So I don't have that concern anymore. Things I was you know, most concerned about really has to do with tying our hands when it comes to approvals on planning and zoning issues. And in this particular case, the only adopting the energy conservation portion of this may only have you know, minimal impact on, on 
really planning or zoning decisions, right? right? When you could, you could see find a situation, for instance, where, as we I think we talked about a little bit last week, that <clears throat> you you know that the, the developer or builder wants to site the building in a certain way to achieve to get solar gain or to get um, uh, you know daylighting or something, right? And then that we don't like for some reason, right? Um, or as a roof line or something that we don't like, or you know something sort of architectural or whatever. And so, um, and, and then there, you know, the, the turnaround arguments then as well. We're just trying to meet your energy code, and so you know I can't change that element, or I can't do this, or I can't do that. And uh, I think there's always options for changing stuff at some point or another. So I guess I'm a little less. About it. But going to the full green building code might pro go to a um, larger uh, planning issues, which but we're not tackling that tonight. Or so. Um, I, mean, I, I, I think I think everybody wants to try to. Well, not, maybe not everybody, but we will. We do. The, the, oh, it's a worthy goal to to try to achieve. A, Sustainability and energy savings, and of course, in the in, when you're talking about a return on investment, that's probably good business from a developer standpoint. You know, a little bit more money out front, but lower operating costs and things in the long term. So, yeah, I think it's pretty pretty easy pill to swallow from their perspective in most in most cases. Yeah, and I think most people who are choosing to build in, in this area have an expectation that. Culturally, it's an important part of you know this geographic neck of the woods, right? Yeah. So I don't think anybody would be real surprised by. It. Um, I, I, I think there are some things that we may have to, you know, as you alluded to, is overlook as to aesthetics, and overlook to certain things to say, well, okay, to meet certain standards, that's what we have to do. So. Well, I think any good architect is worth his salt. It's going to make the way. building look, yeah. look good no matter what, right? I mean, to utilize those those types of green design elements to their benefit and not, not to detract from the aesthetics of the building. So, right? I guess I'm yeah, crossing our fingers. We don't really do that very much right? in this particular case, right? But I guess there's the only other piece of that really relates to how a certain building might affect a neighbor, for instance. And you could have window, you know, a bunch of whole side of windows that looks right onto the neighbor's property, and that that causes some heartburn. Or you have um, uh, maybe a, a roof line or something that somehow obstructs a mountain view, or you know, something down the road that is an issue. But I guess all those things are really already handled in the code when it comes to building height and massing. Right. Building to the property lines and all those kinds of things. So again, probably pretty rare circumstance, yeah. but yeah. Uh, the future green building codes, both residential and commercial, uh, do have a site development portion of their green. I mean, uh, even a uh, developer before he's got plans for the, for the bill, how he develops his site, he can get, you can get a green site. Developer, and then the individual lots out there also have their own green points that they can get for for them to do the building. But, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an option in uh, this code here what you include or don't include. But the community decides what they want included, a certain portion of that. Do you think this is the right time to do this from a you know, your professional opinion? Yes, uh, especially since the board has kind of made it a goal of theirs. And, uh, I was thinking, I was like I said, from the professional perspective, not yeah. to say from the board's, you know, board. the board's right. desires perspective. But uh, I do, yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in favor of adopting the entire green construction code mm -hmm. that IGC is putting out, and, uh, uh, just as a benefit. To uh, 
the more people that adopt it, more things that adopt it, the more benefit it is to the entire country in, in a lot of different ways. So. Okay. The other facts I've come across is, you know, they say 20%, or 23% actually, of the energy usage, just in everyday energy usage, is from the constructed buildings. And when you add in the construction of the buildings, that goes up to like about 60%. You know the energy to construct the building when you add all that in, uh, the energy uses, so uh, including all you know, the materials that are yeah, manufactured to the energy consumption of office buildings as a percentage of all the energy consumption of, of operating structures. Uh, I don't have that. I haven't come across that. It's something like that. Total. Yeah, it's a pretty big. Issues, any legal issues, any? Okay. So what, what's our next? Our, our next we don't have a quorum tonight anyway. It's a work session, so we're not acting on anything tonight anyway, right? So that's right. That, so the next meeting would be November first. Um, it's two weeks from tonight, and on that meeting, you also have on the agenda. Um, our public works director wants to present a traffic calming. Um, is it a proposal study plan? Plan. Study for, for Rock plan. Creek Parkway I believe Rock Creek Parkway, and I, I think even Colton is part of that discussion as well. Um, but he, so we have a lot of time for that. Okay. So this would not be the only thing okay. that you'd be considering. So I think we'd be looking for a recommendation from the commission to the town board regarding green. Chapter 6 of the Green Code. Right. Okay. And then you'll hear from Mr. Keller. Okay. okay. Anything else? No? Okay. And I don't think we have any more questions. I don't, okay. So Thank you, Ernie. Uh, just for clarification, this is not going to be a public hearing. Per se, like you know, like where I have to approve the yeah, You mean November first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it will be just for the planning commission to make a recommendation. I believe so. To the board. Yeah. Correct. Thanks. Okay. Okay. I think that's unless there's any other announcements. Does there any come back when we do have a quorum or? Yeah, I'm assuming you'd be back here next time. For Can you be ready? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Right. yeah, we'll have to have a quorum. Yeah. So five right. constitutes a quorum. So you, you, just one more person, correct? From, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you for your time. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for your service. We are adjourned.